I did want to get to a question that I had for you around nationalism. You did a podcast that I thought was really interesting in which you equated nationalism to racism in the future. I think some people might bristle at that idea just because of how many issues we have around racism in America today, but I'm actually a hundred percent on the same page as you. We kind of tend to look at, you know, countries like Russia, North Korea, or, or to some degree, China as being the evidence of why nationalism can be a bad thing. But then we, I feel like when you criticize America, you kind of can be called out for not being a patriot in some regard. I just wanted to understand what your thoughts on nationalism were and why you think that it's a dangerous idea. Most of our national borders are quite arbitrary. Places like the Middle East and others, the British Empire just drew lines and they were lines that they thought should be there and there was no real reason. And they often were very divisive among ethnic groups, you know, and they didn't care. And so the idea now that these people are somehow to champion those arbitrary lines. I mean, if you want something really weird, this is not quite the same thing, but read the history of the American states and the borders of American states. It's so bizarre. The borders are just basically weird artifacts of some moment that don't really have true meaning in our own borders of a nation. There's been no American president who has ever died under the same flag that they were born under. Hmm. Because our nation's borders have been changing and they will continue to change. So that's one thing. It's just that the, the very concept of a nation is kind of arbitrary. And of course, it's completely arbitrary that you happen to be born in it. It's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> like you're a patriot. Does that mean that if you were born in China, you'd be a patriot in China, you know? Or and so this kind of like sports teams a little bit where you are a champion. There's a natural thing if you're going to root for your home team in the Olympics or something, but that that needs to be transcended. I mean, th th there is a, a level of tribalism that works for humans because we are very tribal, but civilization is about transcending those things and we can be taught to transcend them. And that's part of what civilization is about. And our next level of civilization is to transcend the tribalness of nation mm -hmm. states. And nation states are, it's often said that they're too big for, you know, the small things and they're too small for the big things. And so they're often not really the best size or level to do things. And what we know very clearly is that we have planetary problems. And therefore, we have to have planetary solutions. And often, the nation-state agenda gets in the way of that. And the kind of nationalism that I'm talking about is the ones that where the nationalism, the belief that their sovereignty transcends any kind of global cooperation is just mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I tell people is I'm not a pacifist, I'm a policifist. Meaning, I think that the problem with war is that we have this idea in our planet today that nation states have a right to you know solve the solve the wrongs that they believe have they've been injured with a police state solves this problem by having a third impartial third party so if if two people are having a feud um and someone harms another, you don't have the right to harm them back to apply the, the justice. We have a system and it's called police and courts. And you go to them and they decide, and then they met out the punishment. And that breaks the cycle of revenge. Well, nations, we're operating with this idea that nations have a, a right if one country harms them, that they can hit back. And we don't want that. We want to have a police system where you appeal to the system. And then the system, if, if there is punishment or restitution, they will apply it. And until we have that, war becomes much more common because that's the only way that nations believe that they have any right to fairness. And so we need to have a system where the nation states don't have that perceived sovereignty, where they believe they have the right to protect themselves or whatever. And we need to have this international court system. 
Now, the problem with the court systems like the UN is that the UN is very undemocratic. I've never elected anybody. So we, we have to kind of step up our game and try to imagine how we have a system that is really representative of most people on earth. What that looks like, I have no idea. <laughs> it's really hard to imagine how you have something that would I mean, if nation states are too big for small things, it's like the planetary system is going to be way, way too big, but it's going to be needed. And so we can use some innovation and ideas about how we can construct a system where you feel you actually are representative or have some say in, in the governance at the planetary scale. And hmm. as, I don't think it's impossible. I think it's difficult but possible. And there, there might be mechanisms of representation that we don't have right now. And so what that might be, I don't know, but I do believe it's something we should be working on.